Is it getting blurred, ma'am, or something? No, no. I, I put something in front of it. Okay, ma'am. No, no problem. Uh, no problem. Okay. All right, I see. Then where should we uh, start then? Yes, you can see me now, right? Yeah, we'll be starting in a minute. Okay. So for the slides, you will upload it for me or I will upload it uh, from yeah, my, I'll, my side? I'll, I'll be putting it on the screen, ma'am. And uh, you can just click on next, next, and you can start presenting. OK, all right. And uh, ma'am, for the moderator, ma'am, can you hear me right now? You can? Ma'am, uh, can you turn your ca turn your audio on, ma'am? We are not being able to hear you. Your audio. It's on the top of the left side. Ma we are not being able to hear you, ma'am. It's on the left hand side uh, top. We cannot hear you now. Okay, ma'am, so we'll start uh, like on the right hand side, ma'am, uh, you can see the chat box for the moderator. Uh, there's a chat box, ma'am, uh, on the right hand side. Could you see it, ma'am? A chat box on the right hand side. The chat box, okay. Ma it I will can see the chat box. Uh -uh. Yeah, yeah. ma'am, uh, actually the moderator will be getting uh, a lot of questions in the chat box, ma'am, during the presentation. And she has to oh. note them down and she'll be asking those questions to you at the end of the presentation. Mm -hmm. There is some problem with the setting, I think so. Yeah, now now you're audible. Now you're audible, man. Now again, I cannot hear you because I have changed the setting. Do you hear now, ma'am, or have got questions? Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can. I cannot hear you now. Uh, ma'am, uh, like, uh, ma'am, could you speak, please, whether she's able to hear you or not? Let me check just a moment.
Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, I have to log in through phone. My PC is not. Ah, okay, ma'am. So what we'll do is, ma'am, on the right hand on the right hand side, you can see a chat box, ma'am. Uh, okay. Could you see it, ma'am? The chat box. Could you see the chat box, ma'am, on the right hand? Side? Enable chat. Yeah, chat box. Yeah. Yeah, chat box. So therein you will be receiving questions, ma'am, during the presentation. So you will have to note down some important questions, relevant questions to the topic, and you can ask them at the end of the presentation, ma'am. After okay, the presentation. Okay. So during uh, when ma'am is presenting, we'll be turning our audios and videos off so that no disturbances are created in the background. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Okay, so ma'am, we'll I'll be starting by introducing you, and you you'll be introducing ma'am before. Yes, yes, yeah, sure. Okay. So a very good afternoon to everyone watching us from, uh, live from across the globe. So as we all know that we are gathered here for a webinar on health instruments development and validation organized by association of pharmaceutical research in association with biolix so we welcome you everyone to the webinar so without much delay i'd like to introduce our moderator for the afternoon uh, dr sama shama ma'am she is an assistant professor at dr dy patil biotechnology and bioinformatics institute pune uh, ma'am we welcome you to the webinar and uh, I, I would like you to introduce our speaker and uh, we'll start the presentation. Please introduce our speaker. Over to you, ma'am. Ma'am, you can start uh, the introduction of the speaker, ma'am, if you can. Uh, myself. Ma, uh, could you please introduce uh, the speaker, if you have the details? So should I do that, ma'am? You can do that. Okay. Okay. So, ma'am, I will also welcome our speaker for the uh, afternoon as well, Professor Dr. Nala, uh, Council Member, Malaysian Academy of Pharmacy, MAHSA University. She is also the Professor Doctor in Clinical Pharmacotechs in Malaysia as well. Ma'am, we welcome you to the webinar. Uh, it's an honor to have you in this webinar, ma'am. So I would like to uh, uh, want you to greet the audience and start your presentation. Um, hello, everyone. I should have say uh, maybe some of you from the you know we are all from different kind of uh, time time setting. So I would like to say uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. So uh, I hope all of you in a very uh, good health. Uh, okay, uh, despite of the challenges that we are facing, um, all of us are facing uh, currently the pandemic COVID-19. Okay, um, I would like to thank to the organizer, okay, for inviting me to share uh, some of the, uh, you know, some of the, uh, we call it like a uh, knowledge, knowledge that I would like to share with all of you. Okay, um, some of you may involve heavily in this kind of uh, research method. Okay, and we know that it's very important for us to be um, well, well equipped so that uh, the results that we get from our instrument, it, it can be accepted uh, at the highest level okay, of evidence. Right. Um, uh, sir moderator, can you please uh, uh, switch on the slide so that uh, all of the uh, participants can have a look? All right. Okay. So as been mentioned, okay, uh, for today, I would like to share with all of you uh, in terms of the development and the validation of the health instruments. Okay. Um, uh, since that we only have one hour, I try to uh, 
uh, summarize mm -hmm. as much as I can. And at the same time, you will also see uh, an example of a case study uh, based on this uh, topic development and validation. Okay. All right. So um, health measurement instrument, the word instrument can also be known as the uh, questionnaire, uh, also known as survey, uh, also known as tool. Okay. And some they will mention is health outcome uh, measurement. Okay, so mm -hmm. in, in for a study that use uh, this kind of instrument uh, to collect data for, for your own uh, question, research question or objective, you know, okay, it has, it has to make, we have to ensure that wherever that we are having inside our instrument, okay, must be uh, reviewed uh, and validated uh, properly, okay. Uh, in terms of, we will look at the beginning, okay, the process, you know, on how, uh, 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 of how an instrument uh, be developed, okay, uh, as well, and we will go up to the pilot study, and we will look at the example of a case, okay. At first, we always have to bear in mind, okay, when we want to develop a new health measurement instrument, okay, it must fit with our research questions, uh, which is the objective, okay? You are developing an instrument, definitely you want to measure certain things. When you measure, when you wanted to measure that certain things, that certain things must be able to answer your research questions, okay? And uh, consequently, your research objective, okay? So in the process of uh, developing the uh, health instruments, okay, there should be uh, a review of studies, Okay, a previous studies whether there is uh, where whether there are any research that has been done uh, in developing something similar to the instrument that you would like to develop, or uh, you are reviewing some of those uh, publications that can give you some uh, inputs on how to create the instrument. Okay, and we will look into more into on how that you're supposed to def define the construct of the instrument. Okay, and as well as looking at the aspect of the validity and the reliability of the uh, study instrument okay, and the pilot study. So for the uh, validity and reliability as well as the pilot study, you will have uh, more exposure when we share a case study, a real case study that we have uh, conducted and it has been uh, published okay, in, in a very reputable journal. Okay. So in the early stage of the development of the health instrument, we have to always have uh, the things that we call as the conceptualization, okay? What does it mean is that, you know, in our instrument, we should be able to define what will be the construct of our instrument, okay? Is it, is it just only based on one uh, variables or you have a different multiple uh, types of variables, okay? And these variables must be able to be measured, okay? For the construct to be measured, okay, if the construct not directly with the uh, obs observable, which is we call it as a latent variable, so it is it is good uh, to construct you know, a, a, a multi-item instrument, okay? If let's say the observable items are consequences of the construct, Okay, so we will use the concept conceptualization uh, of the reflective model. Let's say if we have the uh, observable items, which are the determinants of the construct, so there is a name of the uh, things that we call it as the formative model should be constructed first. Okay, for those that are thinking to have a multi-dimensional construct, meaning you will have a, a multiple dimension, okay or, or sometimes people call it as multiple domain and if let's say the domain is related to each other then uh, you are going to use the uh, the term that we call is as the multi-dimensional construct whereby the construct or the domain that you're going to to put inside your instrument is going to have a relation between one to another okay you, uh, you may have, you know, get used uh, with the term, you know, some people say that uh, I'm adapting uh, this instrument from this kind of sources. 
uh, or I'm adopting this kind of instrument from these certain sources, okay? What, what will be the major things uh, when we look at the term adapting and adopting, okay? Um, it is all depends on your research objective and your research question. If let's say you have uh, something in mind, uh, which is the study may have been conducted elsewhere, but it's, it's just not happened yet in your own region or in your own state or country based on the extensive literature review, okay? At, at this stage, if you have a time limitation, you may use the method of adopting, yeah, ADOP, adopting a research instrument, okay? But of course, you must have the uh, permission from the corresponding authors, okay? When you are using the adopting uh, instrument, after you get the permission from the corresponding authors, okay, uh, there will be a stage whereby you would like to use uh, the same language or you might want to translate that language into your own uh, native language, okay? So if you like to uh, translate into your own native language, when you are asking from the uh, corresponding author the, for the permission to use the instrument, you must mention to the corresponding author that I would like to adopt your questionnaires and later uh, we will translate it into our native uh, language. Okay, and this, and this uh, we will use it for research purpose. Okay, uh, by using the adopting method, it's actually, you know, uh, it's going to save uh, some time because for someone to develop a new questionnaire, you know, it is actually taking lots of time. It's a very time consuming process. Many people think that uh, to develop uh, a questionnaire or also instrument survey or tool is very easy, but it's actually, it's not as easy as what many people uh, think of. Eh? Another way is like uh, we will say the term the adapting, okay? We adapt this questionnaire, we adapt uh, this uh, uh, questionnaires, uh, this survey, this tool, this instrument for this kind of sources. If you would like to adapt, adapt meaning you are taking that particular uh, questionnaires and you will do some changes, okay? You will do some changes, uh, maybe in terms of the certain wording, uh, you would like to uh, suit your... Uh, your cultural or, or your cultural part okay uh, of the world and you would like to change this, this and there here and there okay and and maybe some of the item you would like to remove okay uh, to to suit your research objective uh, for adapting you still must have the permission from the corresponding author so that the corresponding author that that those that involved in the development of their uh, questionnaires that you would like to adapt Okay, they should, they must give you the permission, okay, and you must tell them that you are adapting this for the uh, research purposes, eh? okay, and when we're using the method of the uh, adapting from the other available instrument, other available uh, questionnaire survey and tools, okay, it can also uh, save some of the, sometimes, okay, uh, compared to adopting, it, we will use it straight away, okay, uh, exactly as it is, the adapting, there will be some uh, modification, but it will not be as, as uh, time consuming as those that were willing to develop a new instrument, okay? Uh, it depends on the research area, okay? Uh, the reason why uh, uh, some people, they would like to develop a new instrument is because of, okay? Uh, they wanted to come up uh, with some instrument that which is highly specific uh, for certain diseases or for certain uh, targeted population, okay? And also if the if the instruments that have been found, that which is the published instrument that have been found while they're doing the extensive review, uh, were not at the, uh, the stage of uh, those published instruments or uh, surveys, questionnaires, tools were not validated or there's no process of re reliability have been done uh, accordingly. Eh? Okay. So in the uh, uh, types of uh, measurement, okay, uh, we will, uh, or the instruments, uh, the survey tools, okay? We have those that uh, we call it as the self-report, okay? Self-report is the same like the self-administered, okay? Mm -hmm. um, when we are developing the questionnaire, we have to think of if the questionnaire has been designed for the participant for them to fill up by themselves, 
Okay, fill up by themselves, meaning it's self-administered. It's not the one that uh, the researcher interview the participant. It's not. Eh? Okay, self-report, self-administered, meaning we will give to the participant and the participant will fill up by themselves. Okay. Um, number two, if, if the types of measurement that we would like to develop, it is more for the observation study. Okay. Uh, we Use it for observation study, meaning the researcher will have a, a, like a questionnaire and they will and, and they will tick uh, those items accordingly. Eh? Okay. And also there's another uh, type of uh, instrument that we will use if let's say we would like to uh, retrieve from an, an archival records. Okay. As well as the uh, for the examination. Examinations meaning here, if let's say we would like uh, to test the knowledge of the respondent on something. Okay. Uh, what I can see uh, from from the from the search of the reviews that I've been looking around, what we're having now currently uh, in the scientific world, uh, okay, um, many uh, researchers um, keep keep using uh, you know, let's say the words is like they are they are, they, are, they stated that they wanted to measure or assess the knowledge of let's say of the students of the healthcare professionals or healthcare workers, knowledge of the public, okay. But when we look at the uh, the scoring system, it wasn't actually uh, testing knowledge. Why it wasn't uh, actually testing knowledge? Because they they are giving some option uh, for the participant uh, to rate the skill. Okay, it's like from a rate uh, one and five. Usually, uh, when we are uh, mentioned about testing knowledge, meaning there will be a definite whether it's yes or no. Then the score will be either one or zero. Okay. So we have to be very careful from the beginning when we wanted to develop what are the things that we wanted to, you know, on how, how the instrument is going to be uh, used for, okay? Because when we know on how the instrument is going to be used for, from the beginning, the way on how we construct, okay, where, uh, where, where we construct and we, we include the domain, the variables, we should be able to, to really cater the targeted groups, eh? okay? Um, for example, I give the example here, okay, let's see uh, some of the con uh, construct form and indissoluble alliance with a measurement instrument, okay, for example, uh, th there will be an instrument to measure the blood pressure, the speed manometer. so it's clearly stated that, okay, this speed manometer will be used to measure the blood pressure and then the readings, they may uh, relate to the questionnaire that related to the uh, hypertension, okay. Um, another example that I would like uh, to share is, let's say, uh, if we wanted to look at the physical uh, functioning, okay, a physical functioning of, of a person, it can be measured with, uh, let's say, from a performance test, or it can also be measured using the observations, or it can also be measured using by the uh, interview, okay, interview face-to-face, uh, -face, or the self-report questionnaire, okay. So this is the part where, you know, we have to uh, stick okay if we want to measure the physical functioning which of those that we wanted to use is it by uh, using the interview method is it using the self-report self-administered uh, questionnaire method is it that we want to also include some observation or there's some performance tests uh, performance test to it okay um, a little bit on the performance test okay let's say for the physical functioning the information that we will obtain is about what a person can do, okay? However, for the interview or the self-report uh, questionnaire, the information, the one that we obtain, is about what that particular person perceive that he or she can do, so it's different. When it's uh, interview or the self-report, this is what they perceive, okay? But when it's, uh, when it's the performance test, it's like what the person can do, eh? Okay, another next aspect, which is very, very important, very vital, okay, in terms of the formulations of the items and, you know, uh, for us to construct the uh, instrument, eh? okay. Um, number one, okay, we have to, uh, to give some idea for us whether the particular instrument that we are going to develop, okay, we should know whether it's a very the instrument is very new, newly uh, available, going to be available after we develop the instrument, or there's some other studies that have developed maybe a similar. It may not related uh, to the topic or the disease that we we are going to 
to look into but the way on how they construct that particular uh, questionnaires okay uh, this is what we say the examine similar existing instruments okay uh, for example if you like to measure a self efficacy in medication use okay so we will wonder it's like okay is there any uh, example of any uh, instruments that are available for us to measure the self efficacy of the patients in the medication uh, in the use of medication for let's say for diabetes patient let's say for hypertension patient okay so the extensive review is very important so that if you know if let's say you may able to find some similar existing instrument so you can look at the way on how they develop the instrument what will be the, the theoretical philosophical thing involved okay while they are constructing that 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 uh, particular instrument whether those uh, suit with your research question or your research objective okay uh, if you're not having something which is exactly similar which is the one that we mentioned the words adopting okay it can be at the stage of adapting some of the uh, uh, their theories okay their, their philosophical their conceptual framework on how they develop so that it can suit to your uh, area that you would like uh, to test on it, it will, or area meaning your research question or research 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 objective that you would like to investigate on okay number two when you when you would like to uh, formulate the items you must know what is your target population okay so the questionnaires if you uh, if you would like to disseminate it to the uh, population let's say uh, primary school children secondary school children okay uh, teenagers adult okay uh, geriatric Okay, uh, healthcare uh, professionals or healthcare workers or some professionals, the way on how the items, the words that you're going to put there will be different. Okay, uh, the level of the difficulty of the items also will be different. The, the way on how you, re you arrange the questionnaires, the instrument also will be different. Okay, because those target population have, uh, you know, have their own way or, on, on how to uh to to look into those particular item and this should be able to make them answer your your instrument answer your questionnaires okay uh if let's say i give example uh, why is the target, target population is very important let's say you wanted to test uh the knowledge okay uh of for example of public on the uh i use the example the pandemic covid 19 uh, okay let's say we we we, we use uh, we we wanted to develop a questionnaire on knowledge uh of uh let's say uh, knowledge of public uh to COVID-19 okay maybe you know uh, compared to knowledge of uh, COVID-19 uh, among uh, healthcare workers okay so when we construct the item do you think that we will put exactly the same uh, the same uh, words in the items for those that we're going to develop for public or those that we're going to develop for the uh, healthcare professionals the level of difficulty it will be different for those for the healthcare professionals because they must know the things uh, you know in depth about the COVID nineteen, you know from the source until the beginning of the management. There will be some medical jargon will be involved in that uh, words okay in the items that we're going to test on them. However, if we are using the target population public okay the I, the words the item that we're going to put is the words that we know the public should be able to understand and should and and because they understand they should, they will they will be able to uh, answer the, your your items of your questionnaires yeah? another important things that we have to bear in mind when we wanted to formulate uh, the items yeah? okay it is good for us uh, to talk to the to the experts okay to the experts that really know in the in the subject matter of the uh, research that we would like to do okay so we can use uh, one of the thing we can use in, in that interview techniques okay so we can ask them you know uh, based on the review that you have done before eh, before you talk to the expert make sure that you have to equip yourself first eh? okay so once you have equipped yourself first this extensive review okay so you can go and 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 talk and discuss with the expert okay on how for you uh, to, to come up you know what are the points the important points uh, for you you know uh, according to your research question or research objective uh, to you know so so you should you should be able to formulate uh, the items that will be able to answer your research question and research objective okay 
uh, you'll be surprised that you know if you talk with the uh, with the experts, like say we are using this pandemic COVID nineteen. Eh, okay, if you talk to these uh, specialists, the one that really involved um, at the end care of the COVID nineteen uh, patient, they will give uh, different inputs compared to those that uh, work at the very beginning uh, of the. Uh, they are not involved at the ICU. Let's say not not in the ICU area, but they, it will be different for those that just do the swab testing. Eh, okay. So that, that's why I mentioned before the target population is very important for you uh, to be identified first, okay? And then when you talk to the expert, okay, using what, what, what you have in mind about the target population, you should be able to discuss with these uh, experts, okay? What will be the things that, that the expert would like to know and what they would like to see the outcomes uh, of the instrument when you disseminate it to the targeted population, okay? And also, when you uh, when you formulating the items of your questionnaires, you have to bear in mind okay on how to formulate uh, the response option. Okay, uh, sometimes people will take it very easy. Okay, uh, they will just say, uh, yeah, just use this Likert scale, uh, just use this three Likert scale, just use four, just use five, just use seven, and some go up to nine. Okay. Or they may want it to use the visual and visual analog scale VES, you know, just to score one to ten. But the question here now is, what is the importance for you for that particular instrument that you wanted to do the visual analog scale VES? There must be a reason why the instrument being developed using the VES. There must be a reason why you develop your 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 instrument. You wanted to use the Likert scale. Uh, either it's, uh, it's three, four, five, seven, or nine. There must be a reason, okay? Um, certain uh, instrument, when, when it's developed, you know, they don't like uh, put, uh, they, do, they don't like the respondent to select the neutral part. Okay, let's say, example, we use the Likert uh, 5 scale. Uh, they put one, two, three, four, five. So let's say five, one is from the strongly disagree and five is strongly agree. So number three, usually they put neutral or no comment. Certain studies, they don't like to give that particular option uh, uh, to the respondent, especially if the respondent is uh, someone with um, uh, someone with certain level of education. Okay, let's say the targeted population is uh, healthcare uh, professionals. Okay, so if if they if the design meant for the healthcare professionals to just uh, choose. Uh, strongly disagree, disagree, agree or strongly agree, then they will not put the, the neutral because for healthcare professionals, healthcare workers, there shouldn't be no comment section. Okay, so there always must be a reason. Even the response option is very important. And when we look into the response option, we also have to bear in mind the instruction to answer the items. Okay, Many questionnaires have been found that it, it was uh, the instruction uh, to answer the items, it was uh, written uh, poorly. When it was written poorly at the beginning from answering the questionnaires, it will just give uh, the respondents some idea, you know, some creating own idea that whatever that they will put, that is what they feel it is. So the instructions on how to answer each of the items is very important, okay? And also, when you when we are when we want to uh, formulate the items of the instrument of the questionnaires, they must be uh, you have you must have in mind what will be the appropriate uh, recall period. Appropriate uh, recall period is very important, especially if you if you want to do the test retest for your reliability studies. Okay, and it's not just for uh, test retest reliability studies. It's also very important if, let's like, say, your study is not cross-sectional, but it's a longitudinal study whereby you would like to see the response, let's like, say, at the very uh, first week or first month, and then you would like to test the same instrument uh, the, uh, you know, two months later, okay? So it is very important uh, for you to think of, eh, of the recall period. Okay, these are the things that uh, what I can see, okay, the mistakes that usually uh, people do when they are submitting their papers for publication, especially when, it, when it's involving the uh, instrumental uh, development. Okay, number one, there shouldn't be any uh, causes of the variable. Okay, I, I put example here, yeah, uh, which is not true. I'm, uh, I have no 
no no nothing uh, nothing towards the pharmacognosy eh? it's just that uh, for our student here pharmacognosy always uh, you know seems like a difficult paper for pharmacy student okay so i just use this uh, nothing against the pharmacognosy eh? <laughs> okay all right for example attitude toward uh, pharmacognosy okay a cost of attitude toward pharmacognosy might be how one feels about the cost uh, lecturer okay so they'll they may be uh, tempted to write an item i enjoy the pharmacognosy uh, lecturer okay but what happened is it is possible for somebody to dislike that particular subject they don't like the pharmacognosy but they like the lecturer so the item is not clear because there's a, there's some elements of the causes for that particular variable okay so this we consider as bad item another bad, bad item is when there's uh, some uh, some uh, elements of effects of the variable okay uh, i'll give another example here yeah okay first the causes now is the effects of the variable because a student who has a positive attitude okay they they likely to attend class more okay so the item that we may we, that we may write will be i always attend pharmacognosy class however we have to bear in mind it can be possible for somebody to strongly agree to always attending uh, pharmacognosy because they have a good attitude to attend any classes but actually not like the pharmacognosy class okay when we having that kind of thing it is we consider as a bad item so they shouldn't be causes of the variable number one number two effects of the variable uh the the third the third one uh, will be the uh, double uh, barrel items okay uh, what does it mean the uh, double barrel items okay uh if you can see the item they usually uh, write something and then they will give the uh, the reason why okay for example i enjoy pharmacognosy because it is relevant to plantation okay so we can see here there are two points to this item was it um i enjoy the pharmacognosy and it is relevant to plantation what if if somebody they just like pharmacognosy but but they think it is not relevant to plantation so what will be the answer that they're going to select okay so so this is this is the bad part okay so this is what we considered bad item so item we must you know we must be very focused we have to ensure that every item focus on only one point okay we have to put you know uh, we are creating an instrument we can think a uh, question as we have to put ourselves in the mind of, of the respondent you know uh, it's like the empathy concept lah, for example okay so we have to put our mind in, in the in the people's shoes so the same with the question as we have to put ourselves in the people's mind if we are if you put double barrel items you know we will we will request it. it's like okay i i enjoy pharmacognosy yeah but but i don't think it's relevant to plantation okay so please avoid this kind of thing eh? causes of variable effects of variable and double barrel items eh? These are all we call it as the bad uh, design of item. Eh? Okay. Another thing before we we uh, we move forward, say eh, okay. We you, usually in a in an instrument we will have a section whereby we would like to take some of the information of the uh, respondents. Okay. All right. Uh, we will usually we will have the socio demographic data. All right. But you know and people usually think that it's very easy yeah? we just put this uh, age gender blah 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 okay but we have to bear in mind you know when we wanted to take some information from the respondents those information from the respondents is going to be our uh, independent variables when it's going to be our independent variables these variables that we're going to use extensively in our uh, uh, statistical analysis to answer the uh, our research objective research question yeah? okay so when we are giving some response option to the respondents okay it must be uh, very exhaustive okay meaning number one the participant must be able to find their response in one and only one category okay if let's like, say you wanted to put um, age and then uh, you give some range of the age for example uh, let's say uh, from uh, 18 to 25 25 to 32 so what what you can see the mistake there it's not i mentioned 18 to 25 and then i mentioned 25 to 32. the 25 been mentioned uh twice all right so as a respondent which group that they should pick in 
18 to 25 or 25 to 22? Uh, 32. It should be 18 to 25, 26 to 32. These are the mistakes that I've seen a lot. Eh? Okay, so make sure, you know, it must be, you know, when you when you are doing that particular uh, category, it must be only one and only one category for the respondent to take. Number two, the response options that you're given to the uh, responder, it must be mutually exclusive. Okay, uh, meaning mutually exclusive, uh, the, each option is unique from the others. Okay, uh, it can not be uh, similar things that have been mentioned. Uh, let's say uh, you wanted to know the, uh, uh, the, the occupational history uh, of the patient. Okay, uh, you, may, you may put there uh, public servant, for example. Okay, and then after public servant, that you mentioned, uh, you mentioned at the bottom there suddenly, yeah, you mentioned a public hospital. Okay, um, public hospital is the same like public servant. So what is the difference? This is what it meant. Respond option must have equal intervals, okay, as possible, okay, uh, unless uh, it resembles certain defined category. Uh, what does it mean? What does it mean here? Let's say I use example H, yeah? okay. If we use the if we use H, if let's say uh, we would like to see a certain uh, uh, a defined range, yeah? let's say uh, our questionnaires the targeted publish population public uh, 18 adult 18 years old and above okay so we would like to come up with a if it's a range for example that 18 to 28 29 to 38 like that also meaning it is every 10 10 10 each but if if we want to resemble a certain defined category meaning let's say we want to uh, put a category adult and a geriatric Okay, uh, adult patient and geriatric patient. So we know that adult patient, it will be from 18 up to 64. And then the geriatric, you will put them more than 65. This is what it meant. Okay, unless it, if, it's, if it's resembled to a certain defined category, then you can do that. Okay, when you want, uh, when you're talking about the certain defined category, you must know the things what, you, what, what you're putting. I give the example just now, adult and geriatric. So you know that this particular range is meant for adult and that particular range is meant for a geriatric. Eh? Response categories uh, must be very specific. Okay, I'll give example here. Let's say people asking about the socioeconomic status and then the selection that given uh, was low, medium or high. So as a respondent on how they're going to think whether they are having low socio socioeconomic status, medium or high. Okay, so this must be avoided. It must be very specific. Okay, the same goes uh, with the term the, the social desire desirability. Okay, this must be uh, uh, avoided. Eh? I give example of, of what this social uh, desirability about. Eh? For example, we wanted to measure the educational level of the uh, targeted respondents, uh, usually in the public. Okay, when we ask about the educational uh, level, we just put there illit uh, illiterate, literate. So on how the respondent going to define themselves as illiterate and literate. So they shouldn't be this kind of thing. Yeah? It must be avoided. Right. So moving towards the scoring uh, of the instrument. Eh? Okay. We have, you know, we have come up with uh, some items. We have some uh, domains. Okay. And then we're thinking about the scoring of the instrument. Why the scoring of the instrument is very important? Because, okay, as it is very important, especially if you would like uh, to measure certain scores and that certain score, you would like to tell the uh, particular level associated with that scores. Okay. Uh, for example, okay, um, if, you are, if you wanted to measure the knowledge, okay, uh, the question, the items that will be designed will be uh, the adding marks of each of the items that be you know the uh, participant have able to answer correctly okay and then you will uh, total it up okay let's say uh, and then you will have that particular score and then using that score you have a generated a different range to tell that whether the respondents have poor uh, moderate or good knowledge all right okay so i give uh, I, I have putting here example if let's say uh, for questionnaires that they're using a five-point item scale, okay? If they are just measuring the five-point item scale, then we will call it as ordinal scale, okay? But if a total score of the instrument is based on the interval scale, 
Okay, when we have a total scoring of all of the item, then it, it then the outcome the uh, the score from that particular instrument we can use it more. Uh, we can use more inferential analysis. Eh? Uh, so that we can do the test for the differences, you know, we would like to see the association, correlations, or we would like to measure uh, the predictors, so on and so forth. Eh? Okay, so when you wanted to design, the, you know, to include the scoring for the instrument, there are, there are several questions that we have to bear in mind. Okay, number one, on how are you going to calculate uh, the scores or the sub-scores? Sub-scores meaning if you have a few domain under, okay? Uh, whether it's adding all the items or only use the mean score for each of the item or you would like to calculate z-scores for each of the item or for the overall uh, uh, for the overall score. Number two, were all the items equally important and or you will use uh, implicit certain weights. Eh? Okay, uh, this is what I've been mentioned before. Okay, uh, the total score, when we have the total score calculated as the mean of the mean score, for each subscale, it will be different than the total score calculated as the mean of all item. So, um, if let's say you wanted to uh, measure the uh, attitude, okay, attitude towards something, all right. So, whether it's let's say you have a 10 items under the attitude, whether you would like to see uh, the item that being you know a test individually with the mean, or you would like to add all of all the 10. Okay, and you get a certain uh, score, and that score you will have a category. They will develop a category, whether it's a, it is uh, either two category or three category. You know, whether if let's say you wanted to put poor, moderate, uh, good uh, attitude or a poor or good attitude. Okay, so this is must be taken uh, very in detail. Eh? And also, you have to also uh, bear in mind if uh, regarding the scoring of the instrument, what will happen if, let's say, you have a missing values? Missing values meaning the respondents may accidentally skip uh, that particular items. Okay, uh, this usually true if we if we have the uh, manual, you know, the questionnaire being printed on pages and we disseminate to the respondents. Okay, uh, if you're using that kind of method, so if there is any missing values, you must always think of on how to deal with that missing values. If your question, if your question has been developed online, okay, usually this part uh, we, we should be able to, uh, we should be able not to having problem with because when we when we develop the questionnaire online, uh, can think we can we can you know we can instruct that particular uh, survey you know uh, the uh, the type of the they will they will not able to go to the next page until they answer all the items on that particular page. Yeah? Okay. All right. So when you have uh, created your initial uh, study instrument, so it is it is very important for you to start the uh, pilot study, okay? And the pilot study it is very sensible uh, to test in the same small targeted groups of people, okay? And why it's very important for pilot study because we want to see the comprehensibility, the relevance the acceptability and also the feasibility of the measurement instrument. Eh? Okay, so while we're doing the pilot study, we will also look into the validity and the reliability aspects. Okay, so for the uh, validity, okay, we have, uh, I, will, I will tell more in detail using a case study. Okay, so we can see the knowledge and the, the, and the application uh, at the same time. Eh? Okay. And don't worry, you know, when you're doing the pilot study, you must always allow plenty of time for yourself, okay? There will be a point where you have to revise and then you rerun again, then you have to re-revise, okay? And then you have to rerun again, you have to re-re-revise uh, your, your instrument, eh? okay? Um, bear in mind, if your study uh, is, a, is a descriptive quantitative, uh, the, 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 the design of the questionnaire is vital, uh, it's, it's meant everything. Okay, because that that will be uh, inside your uh, method section, whether it's it's under the uh, paper or under the academic manuscript or thesis or dissertation. Okay, so we will look carefully into how the question has been developed. Okay, it's okay for you to take quite some time during the pilot study for you to produce a very good instrument 
but once you have that particular instrument you can be easily start you know you can easily start your main study and you can disseminate it to your targeted uh, population eh? all right okay so this is the uh, case study that i would like to share with all of you okay um and and this project has been done by my previous uh phd student so i mean he was uh he was the first that graduated with phd in pharmacy from masa university okay uh is dr uh, nanlo samuel jimam okay so under under uh, my supervision so we have uh, created this uh, Actually, there are a few uh, instruments that we have uh, developed. So the one that I would like to share with you is this uh, knowledge, attitudes and practice on the uncomplicated malaria management. Eh? Okay. So from the title here, uh, it can be seen clearly. Eh? Okay. Um, uh, this study would like to assess the knowledge, number one. Okay. So that will be your construct and your domain. Number two, it will be the attitudes. Okay. Number three, it will be the uh, practice. Okay. And we know that uh, this uh, short form, I use the short form KAP. Eh? So this KAP is looking into the uncomplicated malaria, malaria management. Malaria, uh, as, as all of you know, okay, we have the complicated, we have the uncomplicated malaria. So the term has to be very, uh, it, it, is, it, it has been developed, it ha we have developed it to be very specific to cater the uncomplicated malaria. Eh? Okay, so let us look. Eh? This is what I mentioned from the beginning just now. Okay, we must know the reason why we, we wanted to develop a, a new instrument. Okay, for this study, okay, we have seen that there is a big, uh, there's a gaps. Okay, uh, in terms of the healthcare workers' uh, knowledge, attitudes, and practice uh, that will influence their quality of management of the respective uh, ailments. Yeah? Uh, bear in mind, we are using the words here uh, healthcare workers, not healthcare professionals. Okay, healthcare professionals, we know who they are. So healthcare workers, are, are, you know, they, the coverage is more. When the coverage is more, so we already have in mind the item, it must uh, it, it must be able to cater all different kind of people that under the group of healthcare workers. All right. So from the uh, extensive literature review, what we found is like there was scanty information on the valid and reliable instrument. Uh, to assess the healthcare workers' uh, knowledge, attitude, and practice on the uncomplicated malaria. Okay, uh, uh, this uh, malaria, I mean, if it's in African countries, it become very prevalent. Eh? It's very prevalent. So uh, my former PhD student came uh, from Nigeria. So for his country, Nigeria is a, is a become a very main of public issues. Eh? uh besides the current pandemic covid 19 so the uh, malaria has been there for 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 ages eh? all right uh, another thing that we have to bear in mind okay uh, when we wanted when we're developing the study okay which of the uh, validity and reliability method that we are going uh, to use okay so for our study here we use two we we use two different uh, theory uh, for validity and reliability Number one, we are using the classical test theory. So I'll mention throughout the presentation, the CTT, okay? And we also use uh, the one uh, known as item response theory, IRT, okay? Um, the classical test theory, uh, basically, these are the one that uh, we, we, we can be able to uh, use the SPSS, for example, to do the factor analysis, uh, to, to go for the Cronbeck Alpha. Okay, so these are what we call classical test theory. For the item response theory, uh, this one involves the rush measurement model. Okay, so we, we are using both. So we are using those, the classical and also the item response theory. So from here, you know, uh, we can see that, you know, uh, we wanted to have, we wanted to make a very extensive uh, reliability and validity test so that our instrument, when it's being developed, it should be able to cater all the healthcare workers, uh, the targeted population, uh, to measure the knowledge, attitude, and practice. Eh? Okay. All right. So is this is just a little bit on the uh, knowledge uh, on on why uh, we are we are using uh, the CTT and the IRT statistics when we are doing the validity and reliability. 
Okay, I think I will skip this. I will show this uh, table. I think it will be better uh, so that you can see it clearly. All right. So why, why we are using the CTT and IRT? Number one, if you look at the area for the test, okay, for the CTT, uh, the test rely on the single total model. Okay, but for the IRT, we can involve items core models. Okay, for the shape of model relationship, okay, for the CTT, uh, we can see the simple linear relationship between the item score and the construct uh, score, whereby for IRT, we can see the curvilinear, which is the non-linear relationship between the item score and the construct score. Okay. Um, for CTT, the assumption will be uh, it is a weak model and easy to meet by test data, whereby the IRT, it is strong uh, model and more difficult to meet with test data. Okay. And the one that uh, the unique feature, uh, if you compare between the CTT and IRT will be in terms of the item ability relationship. Okay, item ability relationship meaning we're not just looking at the item, but we're also looking at the person ability. For CTT, we're not able to measure the person ability. Okay, but for the IRT, we may, we're able to measure both. We have, we're able to measure the item reliability, validity, as well as the person's ability to answer our uh, instrument that we develop. Eh? Okay, uh, we also have uh, another area, uh, the difference if you look into the standard area of the measurement for the CTT, it will be constant and it will not depend on the ability, as I mentioned before. But for the IRT, it will depend on the ability of the person and the difficulty of the items. Okay, uh, looking into the uh, invariance of the item and the person statistic, okay, for the IRT, it will be yes, item and person parameters are sample independent and it will be accepted if the model fits with the test data, eh? but for the CTT, it's not able to do so, all right? And the, uh, the good things about the IRT when we're using the rash measurement model uh, through the, or the uh, rash analysis, uh, if let's say our targeted uh, population coming from a vulnerable uh, population, vulnerable population, uh, let's say for example, we are looking into um, uh, AIDS, AIDS patient, uh, disabled people, uh, prisoners, uh, certain, uh, you know, uh, uh, unfortunate child, let's say abused children, abused mothers, okay which is, is very difficult for us to easily get uh, the population. So the IRT through rash analysis, when you're doing your pilot study, at least you, you, you can be able to use lesser amount of respondent. Okay, so that you can use more respondent in your main study. So that is the beauty of using the IRT compared to the CTT. For the CTT, uh, there, are, there are major uh, rule of thumb you know, I, I believe that, you know, uh, for those of you that really highly involved uh, in the uh, validity and reliability, the one of the classic example of the rule of thumb is like one item uh, multiplied by five, five respondent. If let's say you have uh, 10 item, then it should be your pilot study should be 10 multiplied by five, so you should have 50. Okay. It will be easy for you to get 50 respondent for 10 item during the pilot study if the respondent is is easily to get uh, like general public okay but if a respondent is very difficult to get okay uh, maybe a certain disease that is not prevalent in your hospital okay so the irt will be the method of choice eh? okay so we look at the objective of the study. Remember from the beginning of the, you know, on how to develop, you must have, what is your objective research question? I'm not putting here, but we go straight to the objective of the study. So this instrument, we want to develop and we want to assess uh, the instrument for assessing the healthcare uh, workers, KAP, on the uncomplicated malaria. And we are using the classical and modern psychometric methods, yeah, the CTT and the IRT, all right? And the research design for this will be uh, the cross-sectional. Okay, uh, uh, please bear in mind uh, when I mentioned just now, uh, uh, when you wanted to develop your item, okay, uh, remember the one that I mentioned, the recall period. If you know that uh, your item is meant, uh, can be used just for the cross-sectional, then it will be easy. If let's say you wanted to design a questionnaire that involves some recall period, 
then this, the words that you're using dash must show that it is a recall period. Okay. All right. So this, the one that I'm sharing with you is the cross-sectional study. Yeah? Okay. So this study has uh, been conducted in the in the, uh, different uh, primary healthcare facilities in Plateau State in Nigeria. Okay, and the data collection period uh, for the uh, pilot study, it was done between February to April 2017. Eh? Okay, and of course, before we can conduct this study, you must always make sure that you have uh, obtained uh, ethical clearance, the ethics approval from, the, from your own institution, from your university, and the place where you're going to, to disseminate the questionnaires, eh, the targeted population. Eh? Okay. So like for this study, uh, the ethics approval has been granted by the Masa University as well as the uh, Plateau State Ministry of Health in Nigeria and also the directors of the, uh, the primary health care facilities of the local government authorities. Yeah? Okay, so this must be ensured at the very beginning before you do your pilot study. Yeah? Okay, so during the pilot study, for the pilot study, as I mentioned before, the, uh, the the calculation of the sample size uh, play a very important role. Okay, so the the method of sampling and also the uh, sample uh, size calculation. If let's say if you base if you only use the uh, conventional test theory, the CTT, as I mentioned just now, okay, you have to follow. You know the very uh, there actually there are a few uh, uh, rules of thumbs. But the one that commonly being used for the CTT will be one item multiplied by five. Some suggesting one item multiplied by six up to ten respondent per item. I'm talking about per item, not the whole of questionnaires. So imagine if you have 20 items, if you're following the rule of thumb of five, so you have to have 100 respondents. Okay, this is for CTT. All right. Okay, so this is why I, I highlighted here. So you have to know, you know, you have to calculate what will be your sample size calculation if, let's say, for the whole targeted population, and uh, you 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 should be able to take about ten to twenty five percent of your calculated targeted population sample. So the number it will be is going to be used for your pilot study. Eh? Okay, all right. So this is what the inclusion criteria that we are focusing on when we're developing uh, this instrument. Uh, as mentioned from the beginning, it will be uh, for the government primary healthcare facilities. And those that train healthcare workers are between 18 to 65 years old that work in, uh, within the government PhD facilities. Eh? Okay, so when we're looking at the instrument development, okay, so if you can if you can look at the at, at the chart there, okay, so we have generated some relevant uh, variables, okay, uh, which is uh, this is what uh, re resemble the uh, our uh study statement the question research question the research objective okay and then after all the extensive uh, review that been done okay it has been uh this uh drafted a uh, self-administered uh uh healthcare workers kap okay uh, for the uh, uncomplicated malaria so originally it was 27 items okay this is at the beginning of the stage eh? after it has been uh this is before uh, under, uh, before undergo the pilot study, eh? okay. So um, before undergo pilot study, meaning we it has been it has gone through uh, this extensive uh, validity in terms of the content validity, okay. So in terms of content validity, validity uh, usually we will do three. Uh, there are many validity, eh? but usually we will do three. Number one, it will be the face validity, content validity. A constructive validity okay so at this stage we have done the face and content validity extensively okay so at the beginning it was a uh, 27 items okay so 16 for knowledge uh, six for attitude and five for practices okay and you can see here the score the, the total score so if they score one to seven uh, we will categorize as poor eight to eleven categorized as moderate 16 to 12 categorized as good uh, for the knowledge items and then for the attitude, uh, between 1 to 40, it will be poor. 15 to 20, it will be moderate. 21 to 30, it will be good. And then for practice, uh, from, from 1 to 12, it will be poor. 13 to 17 will be moderate. And 18 to 25, it will be good. Eh? Okay, so we already defined uh, the, 
the construct domain would be knowledge, attitude, practice, and these are the scoring, okay? And then the category, yeah? Okay. So this has been mentioned just now. We have done the extensive uh, uh, validity. Okay, I will show you what, what, what will be the outcome of the phase validity and the content validity. Eh? So for the content validity, uh, uh, the experts administered corrected draft uh, scale. Uh, we are using the uh, four-point uh, Likert scale. Okay, as, as mentioned before, uh, okay, uh, that's why uh, the, the selection of the scoring for the item is very important. If, if we are usually for the public, we will give the uh, five Likert scale, for example, because five, usually the middle will put the, as a comment, uh, either no comment or neutral, okay? But, but for the, uh, uh, for the healthcare workers, we would like them to state their opinion uh, directly, eh? okay, for the attitude and practice, all right? For the knowledge, we're using uh, the score, which is a zero and one, eh? okay? So for the content validity, uh, we are using this ICVI and also this uh, SCVI. Eh? So we use the item content validity index and we use the scale content validity index. Eh? So we want to ensure the instrument uh, will show the uh, relevance, clarity, uh, simplicity, and the comp uh, is a comprehensive. Eh? Okay. So this is what we have done overall that I showed in this uh, table. Eh? So, okay, uh, as mentioned from the beginning, we have done, we are using the CTT and the IRT for validity and reliability. So under the IRT, we have the item and person. Okay, so for the CTT, uh, for the reliability, uh, we, are do, we are checking on the internal consistency as well as uh, the test retest. And then under the validity for the CTT, we have the, uh, the we have done the internal validity and and as well as the external validity. So for the external validity, we are looking at the convergent and discriminant validity. For the internal validity, we have the uh, exploratory, exploratory factor analysis and also the confirmatory factor analysis. And then uh, for the EFA, we have the factors uh, extractions and as well as the for the CFA, we will we'll, we will show you the result for the good of fit statistic. Eh? Okay. So a little bit explanation on the uh, psychometric uh, evaluation for the construct validity using the exploratory factor analysis. I hope I still have the time. I try to squeeze everything in one hour, uh, moderator, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Um, so for the uh, EFA, uh, when we when we're using it, we have to always remember that we have to have a. Uh, uh, we have to obtain the sample size requirement based on the uh, Kaiser main Alkin, the KMO. Okay, uh, there should be. We wanted to look at the acceptability of the scale and also the floor uh, ceiling uh, effects. Eh? So under the uh, EFA, we have the factor extraction method. Okay, we are using the PCA factor retention, which is uh, we're using the Egan values uh, greater than one uh, rule, which is the Kaiser criterion and also the factor rotation, we're using the very max rotation method, okay? And for the CFA, confirmatory factor analysis, okay? So we are having this, okay? Uh, we want to assess whether it's fit to the model or to the data using the uh, goodness of fit indices, uh, which is, we have the SS, SRMR, the RMS SEA, and also we have the uh, CMIN over the F, uh, Okay, which all those uh, ranges. Eh? Okay, and under the uh, convergent and discriminant validity, so we are using the Fornell uh, Lacra criterion uh, to estimate the convergent and discriminant validity uh, for the scale. And if the uh, construct average variance extracted more than 0 0.5, we will indicate it as convergent uh, validity. Eh? Okay, all right. So for in terms of the reliability, uh, so we did the internal consistency, which is using the Cronbach's alpha coefficient, okay, which is if the value of uh, 0 0.6 and above is, is will be acceptable, okay. And we also uh, did the test retest uh, reliability, whereby the values of uh, 0 0.79 and above indicated good reliability of the instrument, eh? okay. For the IRT, uh, we use the Rush model, okay, and the software that we use is Bot and Fox software. 
we look into the items and persons behavioral consistency uh, and the items and persons uh, reliability eh? okay so there are some parameters that we look into uh, under the construct validity so we have the mean square in fit and outfit standardized uh, z point uh, measure correlation coefficient all right item and person reliability and separation separation index value of more than, more than one eh? so uh, we are using all this range that been put on the slides eh? okay so this is basically i i showed okay uh, the one that we are getting from the particular instrument during our pilot study eh? so if you can see here the number of healthcare workers that we use uh, were 100 was 121 okay and you can see here the way on how uh, we we make up the range okay and the way on how being uh, for the for let's say for the category of the monthly salary okay so this is what being used uh, usually uh, in the study uh, for for Nigeria, eh, they have the category of if it is less than eighteen thousand uh, naira or between eighteen thousand uh, to five thousand or more than fifty thousand. Eh? Okay, um, if let's say uh, in in Malaysia we have a category whereby we call it as uh, B forty, M forty, and T twenty. So if it's in Malaysia, it's like uh, uh, below forty percent, which is the the considered as a low income and then the uh, the m40 considered as middle income and the t is considered as the upper income eh? so every country have their own uh, particular defined range eh? so if you wanted to look if let's say if you wanted to have some uh if you feel that the salary can play some important uh point uh, as your independent variables so you should be able to you know to know what is the what is your country a categorization uh, over you know when we put as the low income middle income or high income eh? okay so all right now we'll be having a uh, more minutes if you can take the presentation. okay sure sure all right so these are the uh, some of the uh, descriptive uh, summaries and also we have come up with the uh, categorization of the scores okay uh, for their levels okay so these are the the the, the results that we have uh, gathered after we did the content validity eh, the one that mentioned just now we are using the s uh, cvi okay and and the i cvi eh, okay so if you bear in mind okay uh, this is done uh, when we have the 27 item eh, is before the deletion okay and this also the efa the result is before the deletion okay so we have at, at that point it was a total 27 items okay and we also uh we also done the uh, efa okay so when we done the fa uh this is uh, for 18 items after we deleted nine items eh? okay and the process when we deleted the items is not just based on the ctt but we also uh compared with the results that we get from the irt eh? So meaning we use two uh, validity and reliability uh, theories for us to delete the items of the one that we have uh, constructed from the beginning. Eh? So this is a very massive uh, validity and reliability exercises that we have done. Eh? Okay. And this is what we uh, obtain for our study for the goodness of fit. Okay. And this is uh, to show the conversion and discriminant validity of the item. 18 item scale after uh, we have deleted nine of them eh? okay uh, and and this is the reliability of of the uh, of the instrument uh, before deletion and after deletion eh? so we can see uh, the difference let's say for example for the attitude domain uh, before the deletion the chromebook alpha was 0 0.59 but after deletion it become better 0 uh, 0 0.76 eh? okay so this is this is uh, the uh, construct validity uh, by the rash analysis before the deletion so these are all the results for the 27 item okay so we we, we look into both results for the ctt and, R, and, and rt as i mentioned before so when we delete uh, the items it's just happened that the the, the same item that give the uh, uh, issues under the ctt also gives some issues when we when, when we run the rash analysis okay so by using both method we 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 like we can see that we happily uh remove the nine items uh from the uh, from the 37 it become total uh, 18 eh? 
Okay. So these are the rabbiti by rash analysis uh, before the deletion and after the deletion. Eh? Okay. So we can see the uh, the better imp improvement. Eh? So uh, for the conclusion, okay, from our study, when because we have been using both theories for the for the uh, using the CTT and RRT, we should be able to delete uh, the unnecessary items uh, for us to come up with the uh, validated and reliable. A self-reported outcome measurement for to assess the healthcare workers' knowledge and attitude and practice on the uncomplicated malaria. You know, sometimes you know, um, if I still have time before answering the question, uh, sometimes you know, uh, I understand that the uh, the time that we have we have uh, we have uh, committed. You know, when we are developing the items for the questionnaires, you know, you may have come up with forty or thirty items. Okay. And then it will be, you know, you you because we attack, we have the sense of attachment to the items that we have developed from the beginning. So after we run the uh, pilot study uh, and then using either the CTT or IRT or you're using both, you know, uh, they will come uh, into a situation whereby we feel that, oh, you have uh, putting all the efforts from the beginning and then suddenly we have to delete 10 out of, uh, out of these uh, 30. And then from the 30 items, for example, you left out with only 20 items. Let's say in my case, uh, from the 27 comes with the 18 items. It's okay. Okay. We have to put that particular uh, uh, attached emotion uh, put aside. Okay. Because, you know, if you really look back, uh, if you, for those people that using both either the CTT and IRT or using either, when you look back, when you look again at the item that, uh, that being deleted, you know, suggested for us to remove, uh, from our construct, from our domain, mm -hmm. you know, we can we can uh, clearly see that you know some of the items that we put is actually it can be uh, redundant, it can be redundant or uh, it is not suitable uh, for that particular targeted population. Okay, so please uh, have like a fair in mind. You know, like uh, it's okay for our items to be deleted, even though you have spent a lot of efforts to come up with, with all the items. The important things is like we wanted to have a, a, a reliable and a validated instrument so that the the outcomes the results that you will get okay uh, it will be a uh, very min meaningful so with that i thank all of you for your attention and i think i will let the uh, madam of uh, moderator to to throw some to throw to throw some question uh, to give any question uh, uh, any burning question that you that you have uh, uh. We can go for a couple of questions. I have a couple. All right. Okay. Sure. Uh -uh. Uh, Thank you. Uh, it was too much to take uh, from this <laughs> session. <laughs> yeah, actually, mm -hmm. I have to think a lot, but I think I have missed a lot also in understanding the things. Okay. Because, uh, yeah. And also, I'm I'm very. It, it's my pleasure. Like you have mentioned, so many critical points to be considered before developing such kind of health instruments. Uh, uh, yes. I have uh, like uh, some questions in a broader sense, not might be so directly related to your work. So you have uh. taken the samples from Nigeria. The location is specific. So how can you make it uh, a globally global instrument? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, it, it's a very it's very good question. Um, you know, when, when, when we're talking about the actually, uh, when we talk about the development and validation of the instrument, one hour is not enough, <laughs> which is true. There are many informations that are being shared, okay, uh, in the very yeah, short time, yeah. after this, everything, okay. Uh, usually, we will have a, a workshop or session that we conducted for two, three days. And this usually excluding uh, the on how to learn on how to do the validity, excluding on how to learn to do the reliability uh, using these two different uh, theories. Eh? Okay, all right. If let's say based uh, using the examples that that I gave just now, eh, the case study. All right. So the uh, the the the, uh, the questionnaires okay on the knowledge, attitude, and practice have been developed uh, to target actually the healthcare workers, not professionals, eh, in these healthcare workers, okay, um, uh, towards the uncomplicated malaria. And then the, uh, when is, uh, the, and then the, the data collected is from the Nigeria, okay, because of the logistic, logistic purpose, all right. 
But if the questionnaire is going to be used outside Nigeria, it is highly uh, recommended because the, 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 the questionnaire, the item has been designed to cater all healthcare workers in general. But the only thing that the uh, whoever that wanted to use these questionnaires, they must do the uh, reliability and validity uh, based on their sample population. Uh, a very quick one, meaning they don't have to do very, if they wanted to adopt, not adapt, eh? if they wanted to adopt uh, this uh, questionnaire based on the example of the case study that I've shown, okay, uh, the, the the thing that the, the, that you can do is like just do a simple uh, reliability and uh, validity test, okay, uh, either using the IRT or the CTP. If I have you only taken malaria, why not other uncomplicated or neglected kind of diseases? Oh yeah, this instrument because uh, it is designed. We have to. We have. To, it has to be very specific, because malaria we have uncomplicated. We have complicated. So if it's complicated malaria, so the 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 design of the items, the words that we're going to put in will be slightly different, especially at the knowledge part. Knowledge part will be slightly different. The attitude and practice also will be slightly different because we are catering the uh, complicated. Because uh, we know that the uh, the uncomplicated is the one that usually, if it is being neglected, it can turn into complicated malaria. So the study is basically uh, we wanted to know at the very beginning when the patient, you know, uh, we can say like either they surrender themselves or when the patient attended the uh, clinics, okay, uh, because the disease is so prevalent. Uh, so this study would like to see the uncomplicated one, not the complicated malaria, because the complicated malaria usually uh, is not uh, is not uh, being attended by the general healthcare uh, workers. The complicated malaria it will be dealt with the health professionals. So if we wanted if we wanted to have a general healthcare workers, okay, so this is the reason why uh, we are having the uncomplicated malaria. Okay. I would like to ask what audience would you like to target for your health instrument? Uh, Again, what audience? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I mean, specific uh, to Nigeria. Uh, no, I mean, if if we use if we if we use the example of my case study, uh, so this particular the 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 new questionnaires that we have developed, it can be used in other countries as well. Okay, as long as the target population is healthcare workers. It can be used. It can be used. Uh, it can be used anywhere. Yes. So it doesn't affect the metabolism part, the genetics part. If the samples are uh, different with respect to other countries. Um. Okay. If we disseminate the the the, uh, the questionnaires, um. Uh. Because the uh, selection of the items and wording that we put, uh, it should be able to be answered by all of the healthcare workers. So th there is there is uh, there is less uh, complexity in, in the question because we are not including a specific uh, only healthcare professionals. If you are if you are putting only the healthcare professionals, of course the wording of the items will be different, and then the difficulty le the, the difficulty level of the item also will be different. So what are your future plans with this? Like where you want to take it, it or. Uh... Uh, what type of other uh, diseases you want to incorporate? What type of other samples collections you are planning to take? Okay, um, okay, for for okay, this is outside of this uh, slide presentation. Eh? Uh, besides, we develop the uh, the questionnaires for the healthcare uh, workers. We also uh, actually develop the questionnaire for the patients, patients as well. Okay, and then uh, the question is for the patients, uh, we, we also developed towards the uncomplicated malaria. Okay, because it was very, the malaria is very prevalent in Nigeria. I think many countries also have similar issues. Uh, the, uh, the number of being people being diagnosed by malaria, we put aside the COVID-19 first, eh, but if we, put, uh, if we just focus on the malaria, it has been for years in, in, in many countries. So for our study, the one that I use as an example, eh, as an example, so we have developed the questionnaires for the healthcare workers. We have developed also the questionnaires uh, for the patients uh, on the knowledge, attitude and practice uh, towards this uncomplicated uh, malaria. And this can be used in, in any countries that have a similar uh, prevalent issues of malaria.
Okay. Also, you mm-hmm. mentioned about pharmacognosy, which is a very interesting branch. Even I am working into it because I am into multidrug resistance. Uh, so, are you uh, mentioning about these kind of natural products in the treatment of malaria? Uh, okay, for under this item, it's actually we uh, for patient, not for healthcare workers. Eh? For patients, uh, there, there is there is a uh, there is an there is item that we 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 are wondering, you know, whether they would like to seek a treatment directly, you know, uh, with the uh, with the health uh, healthcare authorities, or they would like to uh, how to say uh, self medicated. So we we did include that in our item. Because uh, what happened is like uh, I think different countries have their own uh, self-medicated in terms of using some traditional or complementary medicine. Okay, there are maybe some certain leaves that they believe that can help to uh, uh, can reduce the symptoms of the malaria and everything. Okay, so in in the questionnaires we 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 did put that for the uh, patients. Okay, so you mean if they have the self-assessment, they have to eliminate the visit to the doctor? <laughs> uh, n- not really, because we wanted to know. We wanted to know actually, because because you know, like because some they may they may came you know they may seek for treatment uh, when it is already too late. Okay, while they're experiencing all the symptom, you know they they may take it as you know like. A, uh, there's nothing much, you know, it's just a uh, pain at the joint, uh, I just have this fever, I'm having this pain, you know, in the muscle area, this and that, okay? So there's some some people, they take it just very easily. Just for the symptoms you mean. Yes, because, because they feel it that it is something that which is uh, very norm to them. You know, they feel that it's a norm thing, but it's actually, it's not, okay? So the one that I used the example of the case study just now, okay, we we did we did look into uh, that aspect for the patients. We did look, we did look into that. You mentioned about self assessment for curing such kind of symptoms, but there are also other tools that can give you this kind of medications. So how different would your instrument be? Okay, uh, wh- when we look at the beginning, yeah, we must know what uh, what will be our research question and research objective. So this instrument uh, been uh, been specifically designed to look into the knowledge, uh, attitude, and practice uh, towards uncomplicated malaria uh, among a patient, and as well as the one that I presented just now among the uh, healthcare workers. Okay, so this has been made uh, very particular. If let's say if we would like to look into other diseases, so we have to uh, uh, change the, the 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 content because the aim uh, the aim for us is actually it is good for us to have a very specific uh, questionnaire. Uh, we call it as a, like a disease specific questionnaire, so that uh, the respondent when they are answering that particular questionnaire, they are just focusing on that particular topic only. It's not just a uh, widely, you know, uh, rambling here and there. If we talk about the uh, self-medication, even if, let's say, if we are thinking uh, to develop a self-medication uh, instrument, for example, it has to be a disease-specific as well. Okay, uh, it is. If if we make it a uh, very general, it uh, it will be difficult for us to analyze the result. It's like the respondent is actually answering based on what? Is it based on their experience? Is it based on their perception? Or is it based on their specific disease? Uh, so we have to make, put it very specific. This, this is the reason why the, uh, the specific instrument, disease specific instrument is very important for us to develop rather than general. Yeah, so y- you mean you will be archiving all the data of the healthcare workers or patients that will be using your instrument so that later it can be helpful for uh, giving any kind of treatments to them? Uh, yeah, uh, this this data is actually very helpful, especially uh, when we wanted to, uh, to do the uh, counselling part uh, to the patients, okay? Uh, beside the counseling part, it can also, I mean, uh, because this study uh, was conducted uh, in Nigeria, and then uh, the health authority is really looking forward to the outcomes so that, uh, you know, they may uh, think of uh, some, let's say, for example, for the healthcare workers, they may think that there's, there should be some uh, training, more training uh, to be given to the healthcare workers. 
And then uh, some of the outcomes uh, to the uh, policy makers also, they were looking into uh, for a pharmacies uh, to be allocated in each of their primary healthcare facilities. Because at the moment, the pharmacies is not uh, it's not always available in, in, in every of their primary healthcare facilities. Okay, um, the one that the highest there, if let's say for the pharmacy world, it will go up to the uh, just the assistant pharmacy. So the pharmacy is not there. All right. So based on this outcome, so it will help their policy makers to, to, to look into the allocation of the types of healthcare workers that they're going to have at each of the primary healthcare facilities. And also uh, they will look into the budgeting in terms of the human resource and also the treatment the treatment that they're going to allocate uh, to the uh, to the respective patients. Okay. Very informative session, Prof. Nana. Looking forward to oh, have more you. interaction in future because even I am interested in uh, this kind of, uh, what I can say, in, we call it as tool because I'm a bioinformatician. So I would like to develop a database or an instrument or a tool, whatever you call with respect to multi-drug resistant bacteria having uh, some kind of treatment uh, as a source from this we can say natural products, synthetic products and also available drugs and antibiotics. So that mm -hmm. it, some, so it will be in a broader sense because I'll be incorporating different bacteria and their resistance. That's the reason I asked you like how in a broader sense how you're planning to do it. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Uh, uh, just for additional information, okay, uh, we have done successfully the pilot study and we have done the main study as well. Okay, uh, we have recruited like uh, thousands over of the healthcare workers and also our patients and some of it already available in some of our publication. Uh, if, 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 if any of you just type the words uncomplicated malaria, you should be able to find uh, those uh, uh, findings, including our instruments there. Yeah. Thank you so much, Prof. Nella. Thank you. From my side, I have done, I'm done with the questions. If anyone wants to ask, you can proceed. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, I think, uh, so before we end this, ma'am, I'd like to uh, say all the participants who are watching us live that everyone will be receiving an email shortly with the feedback link as well as with the certificate download instructions as well. So nobody needs to panic about how they are going to get the certificates. So as soon as the webinar ends, everyone will be receiving an email in their mailbox with all the certificate and the feedback link uh, instructions as well. So before we end this, I'd like to thank Professor Nala for the beautiful presentation she gave. I think it was such an informative session and it was also beautifully moderated by Dr. Shama ma'am. So uh, thank you so much ma'am. And uh, before we end this, we'd like to assure everyone that we'll come up with more interesting, such interesting webinars in the near future as well. So till the next time, we would urge everyone to stay safe during this pandemic time. And uh, till the next time, uh, goodbye from our side. Thank you. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Have a nice day. Yeah, small love to everyone. <laughs>